Every year in the NFL, it's a new team. As far as goals go, we have one. Putting a fucking ring on our finger. Welcome to the Buccaneers Observer Podcast. This is Ralph Phillips. I'm Molly Bay. Today is July 16th, 2019. 54 days to kick off. Five days until rookies report. And 10 days till... Give or take. <laughs> training camp. <laughs> until training camp starts. All right. Not a whole lot going on. Got a follow-up. Fact check the follow-up. Follow-up. We had talked about Diamond Smith was at the Red Lion High School with a bunch of ex and current NFL players doing some charity work. Yes. We realized that Red Lion High School is in Pennsylvania. Donovan Smith went to Penn State. So we said, oh, hey, I wonder if all the rest of the guys were Penn State guys. Most of them were, uh, except Bodie Calhoun. He went to Minnesota. David Greenwich, he played for North Carolina State. Lou Toller played at Rutgers. And there was one other guy that went to University of Pennsylvania. But for the most part, they were all Penn State guys, okay. ex-Penn State guys. All right. So there you go. There we go. What else you got for us? That's it. I'm done. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Uh, yeah. You know, we were talking about Donovan Smith with him, with him being a vegan. We brought that up quite a bit, that he's following Gerald McCoy's vegan diet. Yeah. What evidence do we have of that other than that one cryptic tweet? He tweeted at Gerald and said, I'm starving already. And he asked a couple weeks later if what vegan restaurants were in Tampa. Okay. So that's the evidence we have. That's the evidence we have. I mean, you're the only ones I know of that talk about it. Yeah. I don't know anybody else that's talking about it. Maybe because he doesn't talk. Maybe he's not a true vegan. I mean, if he's not bringing it up every chance he gets in front of a microphone. <laughs> he was, he he's can't not, be a true he vegan. He can't be a true vegan. <laughs> so what you're saying is Jonathan Smith may or may not be a vegan. Well, from what the tweets were saying, it sounds like he's a vegan. But we're not sure. Yeah. Not 100% sure. Correct. Robert Ayers today were in announced his retirement. Really? He did. After 10 years in the league. So he was released by the Bucks, then picked up by Detroit, and was subsequently released, hasn't played since then. So it's not really a voluntary retirement. Nobody else wants him. Right. Huh. I liked him. I liked Vinnie Curry last year, too. So. I listened to the Ira Kaufman podcast today, and they talked about how Vinnie Curry was still talking to all of his Philadelphia teammates while he was at Tampa. So Why like does that a, keep happening to us? I know. It was like a vacation, basically. You know, he took like half his pay that he was getting at Bucks to go back to Philadelphia. He he wanted to go back, apparently because, it, this is from his mouth, that he knew as soon as Arians was hired that it was going to be a 3-4 defense. So he didn't want to have nothing to do with it. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Well, that's what he said. Yeah. There could be a variety of reasons. Jameis and some of the guys went to the Advent health facility in Tampa and they visited some of the kids that were inpatient. There was one little boy, Jameis went up to him and asked him who his favorite football team was and he said the LA Rams. Wait, Jameis said that? Yeah. yeah. No, the kid. Oh. And uh, so Jameis called Todd Gurley like FaceTimed him oh, with the cool. kid. Yeah. How in the world does Jameis have Todd Gurley's phone number? They're friends apparently. MJ Stewart, his foundation... MSMJ Youth Foundation, which was created by him and Marvin Stewart Sr. I don't know who that is. I assume his father, maybe. They are giving out free back-to-school haircuts in partnership with Fade In Full Barbershop in Tampa. So you register at their website, msmj.eventbrite.com. Go get your haircuts, you nappy people. <laughs> it's only for school-aged children. Go get your hair cut, you long-haired <laughs> hippie kids. <laughs> yeah, he was on Pro Football Talk or... No, it, it was Good Morning Football on the NFL Network. Okay, yeah. Did you watch it? I did. Did yeah. you? No. Oh, well, I watched... They had short clips. For your, short, your short attention span? <laughs> I guess. Well, they had, like, two clips, and they kind of overlap, but really, all together, they were basic. It was basically, like, three minutes. Anything interesting? Yeah, he said that Jameis, he's really supportive and like, hey, he did a good thing here or here. But then he also talks shit to him. Really? Yeah, like during practices and stuff. To the defensive backs? Yeah. I heard there's a big, a lot of competition going on this year, or there has been so far at the camps, between the uh, offense and defense, which is good. Yeah, Jameis plays into that. We got some division rival news this week. 
Grady Jarrett, defensive tackle for Atlanta. He was franchise tagged earlier in the season, and they were able to reach a deal for $68 million. It's a four-year deal, and it makes him the third highest paid defensive tackle behind Aaron Donald and Fletcher Cox. Hmm. I like Grady Jarrett, but I mean, I like him as far as talent goes. I don't know if he's that good, though. What is that, like $12 million a year? Well, he's about all that Atlanta's got on their defensive line. Yeah, which they were thinking they would draft more defensive linemen. They were thinking that? Well, the draft analysts before oh, the draft. Okay. Because they've got him. He's He wasn't under, I mean, he was under contract at the time. Or no, he was said to become a free agent. But even with him, if they were able to keep him, there's not really anybody beside him. Yeah. And Vic Beasley really needs to step up. He's, he's a defensive end? Yeah, defensive end slash linebacker. So he's he's just he didn't really do nothing last year, if I recall. Yeah, I think Falcons fans were disappointed with him. Well, that's good. <laughs> I like to hear that. It'll get all in a tizzy and get mad and fight with each other. Love to see that in other fan bases. <laughs> we didn't talk about this in the last podcast, although we probably should have. The Wall Street Journal, Andrew Beaton, came out with a report about the league pitching an 18-game season to the Players Association. Right. Which we've mentioned before that the current CBA expires in 2020, so they're kind of working on a deal now in advance of that. And the Wall Street Journal report was really good. A lot of the sports news outlets are just reporting the the highlights, I guess. And they didn't really get as in-depth as the Wall Street Journal article did. So if you can read it, if you can find it, I would recommend reading it. The 18 game season would be, it would, the two extra games would come from the preseason so that they would cut the preseason shorter to two games. Hmm. And the players would all only play 16 games. I heard about that. Yeah. Which the players association was not thrilled with that. I mean, how are you going to ask? A lot of these guys who are super competitive right. to sit. I mean, that's a big ask, mm -hmm. and I think I don't think a lot of players would be amenable to that. You know, I'm a big fan of it. If it was up to me, they'd have a game every day. I knew you would be. A year around. Even if you have to sit your starters for two games. Like, yeah, expand the team to 412 players. Someone else mentioned that they would expand the teams, but I didn't read that in the Wall Street Journal article. Interesting. Seems like they might would have to, but man, that's that's just going to throw a huge wrench into a uh, salary cap finagling. Yeah, if there's more players. Yeah, but I'm I'm definitely down for it, man. Take two preseason games out and put two regular season games in. Heck yeah. They pitched the idea in 2011. The owners did, but the NFL PA rejected it. So at the that players time too. are holding us back from having good entertainment or more entertainment. <laughs> What's up with that? They are concerned about injuries. I just rolled my eyes. You can't hear the eye roll, but it was there. <laughs> they they want to... They're really focusing on not the top-tier players like the Tom Brady's, but the ones... The scrubs, basically. That's what they're focusing on with this NFL PA. The, the CBA. Yeah, well, we'll see how it turns out. I just... It'd be great. and It, it would bring in more revenue for the league and... That would be able to increase the salary cap and players would make more money. I think it's a win-win for everybody. Especially if they make it mandatory that players can only play 16 games. I wonder how that's going to work with like stats and stuff. That's going to change everything. Yeah. Well, the NFLPA is nixed it, I think. Already? Uh, well, they're meeting again this week to talk about it and just I, have their Why would they talks in it? general. I mean, if they're worried about injuries... The guy's going to play 16 games either way. Right. They're actually going to get two games off during the year. Yeah, well, they don't want that. They don't want players to have to sit. Well, then make them play 18 games. They don't want them to play that much. Jesus. They estimate that the extra games will shorten the average NFL career from 3.3 years to two and a half years. But the... Well, you know, they say that, but they, they make it sound like... That's 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 BS right there. Because what they're doing is they're, they're trying to say... That players only play that long because of injury. No, players only play that long because they suck. Because of skill. Right. I mean, because they get replaced quick. If you're good, you but can how play many 10, people 15 years. And their careers because of injury. 
I mean, that happens a lot. Guys get injured, put on IR, they're at the bottom of the barrel anyway, and then they just get cut next season. The vast, vast, vast majority of NFL players in their career because they don't have a choice because somebody else better replaces them. It's not injuries. I think maybe they are often hampered by injury and then not given a sh- another shot. They have that one shot, and then they get injured, and then that, that's it. Well, look at Robert Ayers. We just talked about he's retired. He ain't injured. He's just old. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants him anymore. That argument doesn't make any sense to me with the NFLPA. Uh, well, you know, they're not going to agree to anything unless they can get some good compensation in return. So. Yeah, they want increased player benefits, player performer bonuses, changes to the minimum salary structure, and the ability for players to reach free agency more quickly. Is that in general? or Yeah, in, that's kind of their goals with this negotiation. Well, they, they want more guaranteed contracts. I know yeah. that. What were all those things again? Let's go one by one. Increased benefits. Like what? I don't know. Pension plans and the probably health care after they get out. Yeah, uh, maternity leave, <laughs> <laughs> uh, player performance bonuses, which I think is great. And that should be built into contracts. Yeah, that, exactly. I, I think most contracts should be performance based. Yeah, but, hey, that's just me. What do I know? They want changes to the minimum salary structure. Yeah, that's understandable, but you could do that with. More revenue from 18 games. Yes. I think that's that owner's standpoint. Uh Uh-huh. And if you increase the minimum, which is what they're asking for, right? Yeah. That's just going to decrease everybody else's pay. Right. Yeah. They're really, it seems like they're going into these negotiations to help the little guy. Not the Tom Brady's, not the Drew Brees's. That's a Joe McCoy. Well, last time, last CBA, they did the exact opposite. They went into the... Negotiations to help the old heads. Yeah, and the rookies got screwed. Right. So now this time all the rookies are bitching, I guess. So they're like, well, let's do something for the rookies. Now, I, I don't think it's just the rookies. I think it's yeah, the people that years. don't, well, people that don't last in the league that long. I think Which the is, scrubs and yeah, the lower tier players. Yeah, the vast majority of NFL players don't get a second contract. Right. I'm saying that off the top of my head. I don't know that for sure. I would just assume it. You need to do a follow-up. No, no. Here we go. (laughs) Follow-up tomorrow. Write it down. I also want to know the exact number of NFL players, too. I always say it's something like around 1,500. I think it's like 1,272 or some crap like that. Actually, we could do the math real quick. 53 players times 32 teams. Yeah. Then you got practice Practice squad. squad. What's that, nine? I thought 11. Is it 11? I don't know. Okay. It might be nine. Just do nine. I don't even, you sound more nine? sure than I am. Five. I don't know. Okay, so that's 1,696 players in the NFL just on the active rosters. I'm looking up how many players are on the practice squad. Ten players. Ten. Okay, so that's an extra 320. Oh, no. St- Wait, that was CFL. Why would Wikipedia give me CFL? Nobody cares about the CFL. <laughs> <laughs> You know, who does care about the CFL? Who? Uh, who follow? I, I don't think I've ever seen a CFL jersey. I couldn't even tell you what any of their teams look like. No, they they got cool names. They're like Argonauts. Yeah. Okay, 10-man practice squad. So it is 10? Yes. All right, so that's an extra 320. It says 2,016 players. Currently in the NFL. Every year. At any one time. Yeah. It can never be more than that, but it could be less. Right. So you could just say 2,000 players. There's 2,000 guys in the NFL. So you figure if the average, what they say, the average is 3.2 years? 4.2. 4.2? Yes. Damn. That was a long time. Oh, no. It was 3.3. The NFL says the average career length for a player who has played in at least three games is 4.2 years. So they disagree on their numbers. The NFLPA says their the average NFL career is 3.3 years. Well, remember, we did the stats on that and found out that the first round pick, if you're first round pick and you start, your average is seven years or something like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a big difference between guys that actually are drafted and guys who are undrafted and then guys who don't get to start in their first year and all that good stuff. There's a, there's a whole bunch of factors that go into who plays a certain length of time in the NFL. Mm-hmm. So, anyhow, you can say. That 2,000 people is overturned every four years. Yeah. So that would be, just throwing numbers out there, 
that would be 25% a year. So that would be 500 new NFL players a year. Mm-hmm. All right. There we go. Yeah, but that's who they're trying to look out for. It's these guys who don't make it that long in the league, I think. Whatever. I'm just ready for some damn football. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Did you see the Green Bay Packers? They're the only team that's public, so they have to release their financials every year. Mm-hmm. And they showed a two, $274 million revenue receipt from the NFL. So that means that the NFL handed out $8.7 billion to the teams. Yes. $274 yeah. million? Yeah. Per team. Per team. Salary cap is one ninety. I think it's 188 188 Yeah. That's not bad. They should be building their own stadiums. This is true. $274 million, That could build a stadium, right? Well, they got to pay the players, too. So we have $274 but look, I'm all so about So does the that math include the 274 million? Does that include what the the salary cap? Yeah. Oh, it does. Yeah, I thought the they... salary cap was separate. No. So if they're giving out eight billion dollars, I mean the NFL only makes like ten billion. Yeah. Well, I think it's like a co-op. Yeah. Yeah. So anyhow, at 188 million for the salary cap. They get 270. That leaves the teams with 86 million dollars. Then they got to, you know, do all their equipment. They got to pay coaches. They got to pay front office staff. They got to do some of them have to do maintenance on the stadiums. Most of them don't. <laughs> uh, they've got marketing promotions. But what about the revenue? Is that including revenue sharing from like gear and the broadcast? I think so. Yeah, it, it all goes into one pot. And then they divide it equally. I, t- I really thought it'd be more than $272 million actually, but interesting. I have to look further into that. Yeah. That'll be the next podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what the minimum is you can have for a salary cap or what you can pay your team. We know what the maximum is, 188 Right. Because you can roll it over if you don't use all of it. Really? I think so. I know we went through, when we had Raheem Morris, we had, I mean, we were only, we were only using up like half our salary cap room. Yeah. We weren't paying anybody anything. And I often wondered what, I, and I, I've read it somewhere that there's a minimum that you have to pay at least a certain amount. I think it's like $100 million or something. I think it would be interesting to see somebody go against the system and get a bunch of football players like off the streets and just see how that would work, you know. Get a bunch of guys who are like, would be, you know, would basically play for free and are extremely, extremely thrilled that they're getting to play. Like that David Kenny guy we got. Haven't heard a thing from him. I yeah. know. Yeah, he just he just disappeared on yeah. the, the radar there, but we'll see how that turns out in training camp. We need some bodies at defensive end, so. Speaking of which, I went back and watched, uh, I think it was last night, night before last, some more 2013 Arizona Cardinals defense with Todd Bowles. Now, I have been talking about, you know, I've been raving about how Todd Bowles' defense is going to do and how different it's going to be and unique and you know, you can't really tell what's going on. The formations aren't really identifiable, blah, blah, blah. And I watched two games last night, and I swear to God, I don't know where I got that information from because the games I watched, you could immediately identify a 3-4, 4-3 defense. You know, he played both, and they was pretty standard looking. only difference was that they brought a lot of pressure. You know, they, they did bring pressure from everywhere. And I'm wondering, you know, if he plays that sometimes or if he, you know, I just imagined it. <laughs> I don't know. This you watched the Cardinals. Yes. So previously, had you watched the Jets? No, no, I watched it. I don't think with the Jets that he really. I don't know how much control he had over the defense. Right, he wasn't defensive coordinator. He right. had Casey Rogers. Right. So I don't. I don't see the Jets as indicative of what his defense is going to be now. Although you know his defense might be totally different because I mean what I'm watching is from 2013. That was five years ago. He's probably, I'm sure he's thrown some wrinkles in since then. But yeah, I was really disappointed. I was like, I'm looking at it. I'm going, this looks like any other defense. <laughs> what in the world am I talking about? You had to have watched it somewhere else. No, I, I, I watched the Cardinals. But I'm, I'm going to go and I'm going to do the whole year. He was only there in 2013. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And maybe it was the Jets. I'll look at the Jets defense Yeah, I watched the Jets. Had that to, really freaked me out. Had to do a little fact check there, huh? <laughs> Well, you know, I'm talking all this crap, and people are going to watch the game and go, like, Ralph doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> he's, he's confused because yeah. he doesn't know how to watch film. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, 
These defenses look just like every other defense. Well, we were talking about that last night. I've never understood why defensive coordinators don't do that. You know, I call it the amoeba defense, where it's just like a blob of players that you can't because because it's a real big thing with quarterbacks. You know, they go up to the line, they read the defense. It's a real big thing with defensive coordinators to try to trick them. Why not just have a defense that's impossible to read? That's just standing around. Basically. Yeah, I mean, it really doesn't do a defense any good to be in position, you know, to be... Lined up. Yeah, lined up and kind of standing still so that the offense can see where they're at. And I'm not even saying do that all the time. Every now and then, you see some defenses will do that. Uh, I want to say Pittsburgh has done it before where, you know, the guys are kind of standing up. Everybody's just standing up, like, milling about. Yeah. But you don't see it enough, I don't think. Everything is so... The NFL is a copycat league, and when anything catches on, everybody starts doing it. It's kind of like with everybody hiring all these young coaches now. Anybody that knows Todd, uh, Todd McVay is now a head coach. I mean, if you sat beside McVay in, in biology class in high school, they're going to hire you as a head coach at the NFL. It's just, you know, it's a copycat league. And, and so that's why you get all the offenses look the same. All the defenses look the same. It's so rare if you get an offense. Kind of like, you know, the Panthers, you know, they do a lot of that option Stuff, but but that was big there for a while when we had RG three. Right, but they're a copy. It's a copycat league. I right. mean, they popped up everywhere. Kaepernick, mm-hmm. Russell Wilson, RG three, Cam. Yeah, and it's, you just don't. It's so rare when you get coaches that will really go outside the box. They all still play within the confines mm-hmm. of the game or the league. Don't know what that's all about. And, you know, the, the off season is like for the past 10 years, has been the best part of being a Buccaneers fan because that's when the optimism is at the highest. Yeah. And I'm really high this year on the optimism. But it's like the the closer the season gets, the more – and it might also be because I've been very vocal about how good I think everybody's going to be on the team. I'm starting to second-guess myself. I was watching some Matt Ryan tape the other day. He's just – he played so well last year. He didn't get any credit for it. You know, they – the Trubisky – got a Pro Bowl nod over Matt Ryan. That was ridiculous. It's a popularity contest. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. and Trubisky popped up, and everybody expects it from Matt Ryan. But, I mean, he, he had numbers comparable to his 2016 MVP season. Yeah, but the team still went, what, 5-11, 6-10? and It wasn't his fault. It was the defense, just like us. Same damn thing. Yeah. They got plagued with injuries quick in the, off, or in the beginning of the season and could just never recover. But that's the thing with Atlanta is that it kind of seems like they just have Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, and then I guess you could say Grady Jarrett on the defense, but they don't have these, like, shining stars that can pull the rest of the team up. And Matt Ryan doesn't seem to be that type of guy who's got that oomph. Yeah. I mean, technically, he's he's fantastic, but he just doesn't seem to have that oomph to inspire people. Yeah. Now they've got... Uh, Cutter back. He's their offensive coordinator. He was their offensive coordinator when, and he played very well for Cutter. They had a pretty dynamic offense. So now Matt Ryan's not going to have to learn a new playbook. He already knows this. Most of the receivers do. I hope they're going to change the terminology. <laughs> no, or not. No, I Cutter, don't know. They probably won't. He doesn't understand strategy. He understands clipboards, stats, explosives. Explosives. So, you know, the more I'm thinking about it, I'm like, oh, man, Atlanta could be. Maybe, but you can say that every year in our division. This is true. I think we were in the best division in the NFL. Yeah. Well, when I say best division, it's only the best because we're in it. The other three teams are jerks. (laughs) Uh, But talent-wise, we're in the best division. Yeah. Most competitive with each other, I think. There was a long time where no team in the NFC South had gotten the NFC South Championship two years in a row. Right. I think Carolina broke that. Carolina straight. broke it. Yeah, yeah. I think it was like 2010 or something. Yeah. It was like over a decade, I'm pretty sure. And there was a lot of from worst to first. Yeah. I mean, our division is always tough. So any game, particularly in the division, it's any given Sunday. But I think the division games are especially up in there. Even when we're at our worst, we still play tough against our division opponents. This is true. I'm just so ready for football to start. <laughs> I'm tired of watching last year's games. I know. I want some new games. Well, the All or Nothing comes out on Friday. That's right. That's when the 
It's when the season starts now. No, you, that's hard knocks. No, it used to be hard knocks. Oh, okay. But now it's going to be We're all or nothing. Yeah, why not? So who's going to be on all or nothing next year or this year, which will air at the end of the next year? Didn't they announce it? No. Oh, we don't know. No. Good. And how do they do that? How do they hide that? <laughs> I mean, because nobody knew that the Panthers were going to be on all or nothing until Amazon announced it. Right. And they had all these cameras around them. So how do they hide that information? Do they have a bunch of crews out with each team? Oh, maybe. And you never know which one it's going to be. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. They should do. They should do a documentary on the making of All or Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's so meta. <laughs> so that's Friday, man. I'm excited about that. Yeah. God, can't wait to see that collapse. We'll binge watch it all weekend. I want to thank everybody that's been uh, sharing our podcast, getting it out there, letting everybody else know about us. If you think about it, just go ahead and hit that share button in your app or on the website or whatever. Throw us out on Facebook or Reddit or Twitter or somewhere out there on the inter interwebs, the inner tubes. <laughs> we do appreciate it, guys. And gals. I wonder how many women followers we have. That's a good question. I was going to say, if you're a girl follower, send me an email, let me know, but then... I realized Molly would probably get a little pissed off if I said that. <laughs> and you said it anyway with a caveat. <laughs> I got it out there, but uh, it was a joke. You sound like your mother. <laughs> yeah. My birthday's coming up. I'm trying to talk Molly into buy getting buying me the Mike Evans inverted jersey on NFLshop.com. It's a cool one. Yeah. So it's like it's the different. pewter in the body and then the shoulders are red. Whereas the jersey is red on the body, pewter on the shoulders. I've never seen that design. Me neither. And I, we were talking about this the other night. I, I like unique jerseys, but I wish I would have got one of the salute to service jerseys. I really like those. Yeah. The green ones with the camouflage on them. Mm -hmm. I need to get a color rush jersey too. It's a long list of jerseys. I'd buy a jersey every week. <laughs> that, that'd be all I'd ever wear. Yeah. The Buccaneers jerseys. I'd have to take them and get them tailor fit though. Do they do that for jerseys? I don't do them for anything. <laughs> Although the newer jerseys are a better fit, I think. Yeah, they're pretty form-fitting. Yeah, the older jerseys, geez, man, you look like you're walking around in a pillowcase. Yeah. <laughs> so boxy. Yeah, not very flattering. No. And I'd always tuck them in, too. I was that dude that tucks a jersey in. Because they're just so long and baggy. Yeah. That's going to do it for us today. If you want to get in touch with us, you can reach us on Twitter at Bucks underscore Observer. We're on Facebook and YouTube. You can search for us there. Our email addresses are mollybay at buccaneersobserver.com and ralph at buccaneersobserver.com. And we have a website, www.buccaneersobserver.com. We'll have another episode out Friday. It will be before the All or Nothing. We'll probably talk about the All or Nothing on Sunday. You know, does Amazon do the where they put it all out I the whole so. season at once? Yeah, I think so. I love that. I love binge watching shows. Yeah. I really hate waiting for shows now. It's like Rick and Morty. It's, I, I think that's the only show we watch anymore where it's uh, on broadcast television where you have to wait. And it sucks. Yeah. I wish we wouldn't even known about that show until like two years from now so we could have <laughs> just watched them all at once. Maybe Rick will develop some kind of... <laughs> time machine that will be effective on us all righty so uh we'll have another podcast out friday and we'll have we'll cover the all or nothing on sunday's podcast or monday's podcast till next time guys go bucks <laughs>